Welcome to this tutorial on creating a weighted gradebook. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to create a gradebook on your own. Identify when it's appropriate to use a category within that gradebook. Demonstrate how to automatically drop a grade. And explain the rule of 100. Let's get started. For today's gradebook, what we're going to do is we are going to create a gradebook that looks very similar to this. In my class, I have five quizzes. They're worth a total of 20%. I do drop the lowest one of those quizzes. Depending upon how things go with during the semester, I may actually give them more quizzes than just those five. I'll give them four assignments. They're worth 40% of their total grade. I have one midterm worth 20%. I have one final exam worth 20%. So keep this in mind as we get started with our weighted gradebook. In my Oaks course, I'm going to choose Grades from the Upper Navigation and Grades. So now let's go to Manage Grades. This is where we're going to create our gradebook. And you'll notice in the blue New button, I have two options, Item and Category. Item is the actual gradable item. The, the column in the gradebook where I can put whatever percentage they got on their assessment. The category in a weighted gradebook is used for two things. One, it's used to categorize or group a bunch of like items that might share a weight. For instance, when I said all of my quizzes will be worth 20% of their final grade, I'll make a category called tw quizzes and that's worth 20%. Whether I give them one quiz or 50 quizzes, it's only worth 20% of their grade. The other reason that you would use a category is that that's how you can drop the lowest or highest grades within a group of grade items. So for instance, not only am I giving them five quizzes worth 20% of their final grade, but I'm dropping one of those quizzes. So this allows me to do that dropping, plus it allows me to give an aggregated grade at the category level. So I'm going to begin by creating a couple of categories. So I'm going to choose category here and I have to give it a name, call it quizzes. I can ignore the short name, I can ignore the description and as we come down here we're going to choose the weight. Now this is the weight for the entire category. So all quizzes, no matter how many I give, are worth 20% of their grade. If it is humanly possible in your gradebook for them to get more than 20%, you need to check this box, otherwise it will cap it at 20%. The next thing I have to determine is how I want these grades distributed. So we have this rule of 100, and that means that the gradebook itself has to total 100, but also within every category, all of the items within that category must also total 100. So this determines how I'm going to distribute those. In my example, I plan on giving five quizzes and I plan on dropping the lowest one. So I could use this first one where I have to manually assign it weights, which means that when I create that quiz, I'll say it's worth 100 points, but it's worth 20% of this particular category. I could also then have quiz two worth 30% of this entire category. It's completely up to me how I choose to weight these. The next option is that Oaks is going to automatically create the weights for you and it's going to create them based on the number of points that each quiz was worth. So if I have one quiz worth 10 points and one quiz worth 20 points, then it's going to weight the second quiz more heavily than it will weight the first because it's doing it based on that point value. And the third item, which is actually the one that is most often used, distributes them equally across the category. So in this case, I'm going to have five quizzes in that category, and they would all be worth 20% of that particular category's grade. However, I'm going to drop the lowest quiz, and I can do that only in this area by choosing the lowest number of non-bonus items to drop for each user. I'm choosing to drop the lowest quiz score, so I'm going to put the number 1 here. If I was dropping the lowest 2, I would put the number 2, etc. But by putting this number 1 here, that's going to drop the lowest quiz score. So at the end, all of the quizzes will only be worth 
or each of the quizzes will be worth 25% of that category because really I'm only counting four out of the five. Now I know that this sounds confusing, but when you see the final grade book, I think it's going to make more sense to you. All right, so all I've done here is give it a name and chosen some items in this grading area. I gave the category its total weight, and then I determined how the different items would be distributed within that category. I'm going to choose Save and New because I'm going to do one for Assignments as well. And I'll call this category Assignments. And I said that my assignments here would be worth 40% of the total grade. But I'm going to distribute these weights here based on the number of points that each assignment has. And that's because the earlier assignments aren't as rigorous as the final assignments that I have. And so my first few assignments are only going to be worth 20 points and my last few are going to be worth 100 points. So I want that weight to shift and alter based on its point value. All right, and I'll choose save and close. So here you see I have my quizzes category, and my assignments category, and my final and adjusted grade. But these are literally categories I cannot click on anything. You'll also notice that my grade book is unhappy. It's unhappy because like why, like I told you earlier the rule of 100 states that within one of these categories everything has to total 100%. Well, the same works for the total grade book. The total grade book must tally to 100%. Now, mine currently isn't because I've left off two items that I'm going to grade, and that's the midterm and the final. So let's add those next. I'm going to choose new item this time. I'm not putting them into a category because it's really not necessary. Putting them in the category doesn't give me anything, so I'm not going to waste my time doing that. So I'm going to choose new item this time. And remember, an item is the actual gradable entity. And this is going to look a little different. So you're given a lot of options here. I'm going to recommend that you choose numeric. This allows that grade to be tallied into the final calculated grade. And if you feel like you need any other of these grade item types, I'd like you to contact your instructional technologist. So I'm going to choose numeric and we'll give this a name and we'll call it midterm. I'm going to, again, not pay attention to the short name. There's no category for me to put this in, so I'm not going to deal with the category and I'm not going to deal with the description. So far, I've just given it a name. Scroll to the grading area. Now, my final exam is worth 100 points, but how much is it weighted? It's weighted 20% of their final grade. The points are irrelevant. In my mind, make everything 100 points unless you're doing it based on that category that I showed you for assignments where it changes the weight. If it's easier to grade on 100 points, do it because you're using the weight to actually give you your final grade. You'll also see that you have a couple of different options here, can exceed and bonus. Can exceed means that the student can get more than 100 points on their midterm exam. This might be the case if you add a bonus question and you want to allow the student to get 110 points because they got the bonus right as well. If that's something that you want, you need to check can exceed. Bonus makes this entire grade item, in this case the midterm exam, an extra credit assignment. So bonus is what you would choose if you used extra credit not an, extra not an extra credit question on a quiz or an assignment, but the entire assignment is extra credit. What this does is it only counts for them, never against them. So the numerator will change based on how well they did on this bonus assignment, but the denominator for the gradebook will never change. So they can't be penalized for doing poorly. They can only benefit from a bonus assignment. Grade scheme, we're going to leave that as percentage. And lastly, you'll see that you can add an Oaks created rubric to this grade item if you choose. These rubrics are normally used at the quiz, discussion, or assignment level and very rarely are used in the gradebook itself, but know that you can add a rubric to the gradebook column should you choose. If we scroll back to the top, you'll also see restrictions. 
This too is rarely used within the grade tool, but I wanted to show you this because I wanted you to know that you can hide a column from your students. It's just a toggle, so there it's hidden and there it's unhidden. So let's do the save and new because I'm going to do my final exam. Again, I'll choose numeric. I'll give it a name. We'll skip everything and scroll down here and we'll give it a point value. This also was 20% of their final grade. This time I'll choose save and close. Now you'll notice that our error message is gone from the top because all of my weights here on the side add up to 100. So there's my rule of 100 for the gradebook itself. Now let's start adding some quizzes and assignments. We'll do one of these together and then I'll just add the rest and we can discuss them. So under new item, I'm going to add my first quiz and it's going to be numeric as well. And I'll call it quiz one. Skip the short name, but this time under category, be sure to add it to the quizzes category. As I scroll down, I can give it its point value. It's not worth 100 points. And here's the weight. And you'll notice that I can't change the weight. And you might be wondering, why is it weighted 100%? Well, I told Oaks to distribute the weight evenly across all of the items. Since I only have one item created, it has to be 100%. But you'll notice as I create more items, this weight will change. So I give it a point. I cannot change the weight because Oaks is controlling that. So we'll choose Save and New, and we'll create the rest of our quizzes. Okay, so we're back, and here you can see that I've created my five quizzes, and Oaks is taking care of the weights for me. It's evenly distributing this. Now I did tell it to drop one. At the end of the semester, you'll see that it's dropped one, and it's now made each of these 25. And here I've put my assignments in and you can see that it's changing the weight like I asked it to based on the point value for the assignment. The 20 point assignment is only worth 11% whereas the 100 point assignment is worth 58. Now you can see that I have a problem here. I have an assignment sitting outside of my assignments tool. This is assignment number four which I messed up when I made it. So what I can do is next to the word assignment here, next to my assignment, I'm going to choose the drop down arrow and just go back to edit. I'm going to make this assignment four and I'm going to make sure to put it back in my assignment category. It's worth a hundred points. It's not going to tell me the weight yet because it doesn't know it until I complete the process. So I'm going to say save and close. And now that I've added my assignment back into the assignment category itself, you'll notice that again, it has shuffled all of the point values for me. So Oaks is completely taking care of how these weights are distributed and I don't have to do the math, which is a blessing. So at the very top, you'll see I have zero error messages. And that's because I followed the rule of 100, meaning that each of my categories tallies up to 100 and each of the items within my gradebook at this level here also tally to 100. So as you can see from this gradebook, the weighted gradebook is a little bit more difficult to set up. A little bit more thought has to go into setting it up than in a points-based gradebook, but it actually is quite flexible if you get it set up properly at the beginning. At this point, I truly can add as many quizzes as I want into this category and it will still always be worth 20% and it will always change the tallies for me automatically.